Okay, guys, I have tried to tape this two separate times. I don't know if it's going to be received well because I don't know what the audio is doing. Okay, I had to take my mic out for some reason. But we're going to quickly talk about Portia and visiting the Kelly Clarkson show at Universal Studios where the show is being taped in California. Portia Williams calls herself dropping by, hanging out with Kelly Clarkson, and they were pretty much showing the fact about Black History Month and their kids and, you know, uh, her book that she wrote, The Pursuit of Oprah, which we all know. I've done a spill on it. Ain't no sense of regurgitating any of it. Um, and she was touching on certain bases of parts Portia had put in her book about fertility issues and how she had a miscarriage because her fibroids were taking over most of the space where the baby needed to be and one had to cancel out the other and that caused her miscarriage and she was basically talking about she didn't know anything about fibroids and I'm like well Portia when you're in school they do teach about um, health um, education and they may not go in depth but if you were really concerned about you know your body and your mom were getting you uh, I guess pelvic exams at the time and if you were you know participating in uh, sex and you may have gotten birth got put on birth control to prevent it uh, or sometimes you can have bad menstrual cramps and you can find out about fibroids then or something that's causing you to have bad cramps you might have endometriosis you know what i'm saying but that would require you going to the doctor's office uh i don't know what your mother was doing around the time of your teenage years or whatnot whether she wasn't taking you to your physical appointments but you could have definitely gotten introduced to like uh you know, having a, a real heart cycle uh, introduction to blood clots, uh, a lot of, uh, just a whole organic set of information that you could have gotten, whether it was pamphlets or any of that, and they would have been very well uh, with putting you on game and knowledge of what you may have been going through, or maybe you just didn't have any symptoms of having a heart cycle each month where you bleed it a lot, or you cramped a lot and there was just no worry so your mom didn't take you. you know it's just one at 28 day cycle you know you have your seven days where you six or seven days where you're having your period and you go back into not having a period and trying to get it adjusted and third but she was talking about like black people only had the black card or it only affected black people with fibroids and kelly had to you know check on that so now um you know a lot of different people from different races, you know, have that same uh, type of, you know, issue going on when it comes to having that heart cycle each month or just having miscarriages because of fibroids and the third. So, of course, I'm like, you should look to the portion because you can't just staple and generalize one group of people and think it just only affects them. No, baby girl. So, I was glad that, you know, she got checked. But if she did her own research, and, and, and became more familiar with what she wanted to be portrayed as when she got on the show, then she would have been better prepared. But it seems like she was just speaking out the top of her head as usual. And then, you know, Kelly was telling her she's glad to have her here. And it was Black History Month, which they deemed or supported um, the educational purposes and voted on, you know, us, meaning minorities and blacks, having. Uh, it we're well, having a month where we celebrate black inventors, black, I guess, celebrities, anything to the tone of a black person doing something that uh, made America the great as it is today, gave us uh, the black race, our day of shining in to see how much we contributed to the well-being and uh, stability in society, which we know as the great America. So she somehow went up there and was talking about her granddad. She mentioned her granddad organization. She called it for Hosea. <laughs> I'm like, 
okay, if you're not living in Atlanta, you wasn't really around when the civil rights movement had evolved and just then third and the advocacy that was put into that movement, people wouldn't know what you're talking about, Portia, when you say for Jose. They might be thinking you're talking about the Latino family or cult. So I thought that was a big no-no. I'm like, when you're trying to sell your organization or find someone, um, but not find someone, but when you're trying to portray in words what your legacy was that your grandfather had left for you all and for people in general in the community, the food bank organization, you could have put that part. His legacy was left of something he organized, started, and put into fruition called Jose Feed the Hungry Food Bank Organization. And then went into that spiel, which you just said, uh, for Jose. And then you went to say so far as your family still runs and operates the organization, but that would have been your perfect time to say or give out your auntie's name, Elizabeth, I don't know what her last name is, but um, where, you know, people can get in touch if they want to make charitable donations, charitable donations, or wanted to come out uh, black organizations to see what they could do as far as bringing more awareness um, to their state about it, or even just highlighting it for Black History Month, stuff that nature. You know, going out and visit the whole camp and everything, or um, a place I should say, um, organization. But no, she kind of skated over all of that. And I'm like, see, I'm is still mad at you because that shit you put her in on um, Portia, the pursuit of Portia. And of course, you didn't say anything about that. But of course, you wouldn't because it was a train wreck. It was a total debacle. It was a, oh, cease and desist, let's not go there ever again type of structure of a sitcom you had us try to look at. And then you wanted a second season of that train wreck mess. Girl. So I, I found it kind of weird that she wouldn't say, she will say something about her book, which her book and the show was premiering pretty much back to back. But we didn't say anything about uh, Portia, Man Portia Williams' uh, Family Matters. I didn't talk at all and no detail about that, which I found was very, very weird. Very, very weird indeed. But anyway, and then another thing I had um, called myself not liking about the host, at least know something about the person you're interviewing, you know, to very little or a large amount. But she, meaning Kelly Clarkson, missed the basics. She thought Portia had a little boy. Okay. Because when she was telling Portia she was so beautiful, this, that, and the third, when she was bringing her out on stage, and I was like, you couldn't get the basics right, meaning... If you're going to talk about her child, and you're going to put her child up on the screen, don't you think you should know whether it's a boy or girl? But Kelly thought she had a boy. She was like, oh, we have boys, right? And of course, she had to, you know, reiterate to her that now she has a girl and that she runs the household and it's plausible. She may rule the world later on. So I was like, what? What kind of mess is that when your host don't even care to take the time to even find out about you? And then the only thing that she really wanted to talk about was infertility. And then Portia gonna go and say, I know nothing about the March of Dimes. I'm like, girl, you could have Googled charitable organizations in the world or charitable organizations in Atlanta, Georgia, and it would have been a plethora of resources for you to look in. But you're gonna say, I didn't know nothing about it when I was pregnant and I had my miscarriage uh, due to the fact of five boys and just to find like girl, did you not have health, health economics or health uh, classes when you were in high school? I'm like, girl, not very prepared for the interview. And the host of the show that was supposed to be interviewing her was not that prepared. It was almost like, why are we here? Why are we taking up the space? Evidently, neither one of you all pretty much knew what y'all were talking about. And it was just a train wreck. It was a disaster to look at. I was like, oh my goodness, you know? But if you don't believe me, we can go in and listen to a little bit of it. Hopefully we'll pick up on my mic, but I'm not sure. But here we go. Yes, and your dress is so perfect for our color scheme. I, I, you know, I know your show is very colorful, very energetic, so I was like, I'm going to pop. Oh, you did well done. <laughs> it's so good. It's so beautiful. And you, uh, we both have young kids, but you have a two-year-old, right? Yes. A two-year-old boy? She's two. Oh, oh she's a girl. Yep, 
Hold on, she will be three March twenty second. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm in April. Okay. Yeah. Wait, is that, that an Aries? Is... is that an Aries? Got an Aries? I'm not into signs. Okay, so she's here she will lead the world. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, she's leading the house. Then, then so she's, she's an Aries with us. Yeah. And then she's gonna lead the world. That's how it works. But you dedicated your book up to your daughter and wrote, "I love this." It says, "Mommy's tears will never be your fear." So, what does that mean to you? Um, a lot of different things that I've gone through in my life. Some were difficult. Um, some were great. I would rather learn from them. You know, I've already cried those tears. She doesn't have to go through that. Yeah. So hopefully she will be uh, the ending of some of those generational curses and, and things that Break I had gone through. Break the cycle. And yeah, and that's what the book is about. So hopefully when she grows up to read it, that's what you get from me. I love it. Yeah. It's such a beautiful thing. Um, you actually share your fertility struggle, which is a great thing to do. I've had friends that have struggled for years with fertility issues. Yeah. And it's a hard thing to do because people don't realize how much women take that on, even right. though you have no control over it. It's just no. the body. They, they, they're like, what's wrong with me? And that's a big thing to like come out and be open to. But I, I thank you for it because there's a lot of women that will benefit from this. And that's the thing. You know, people, you think what your body is supposed to do. So then when you get pregnant, So y'all take it from y'all uh, from own perspective, which I heard and what I tried to give y'all from my perspective of what I heard. Sometimes when you hear things, people perceive it totally different ways. They look for this, they look for that, while others don't look for that. They look for other things. So, yeah, I really just thought 
Portia could have did a better job with highlighting and being a little bit more of a spokesperson to get people out there to know about the organization, the food bank, and, and how it affects and helps homelessness in Georgia and how other people in other states can get something similar um, to that organization's uh, policy procedures and its makeup that they can implement it in one of their states or whatnot for the homeless community. But I, you know, I was like, uh, here we go again. Where is her PR person? Where is her person that teach her how to display herself on camera and what meat and potatoes she wants to get out in that first 10 minutes of being taped or that first five minutes? So, you know, it just is what it is, but I just thought I would bring that to you all. Portia is doing her rounds on uh, showcasing herself, putting herself back out there. Um, for the public and trying to highlight certain pieces of her puzzle, which is called her life, or what she wants to show and, and what she wants to tell us about what she's doing at the streets. Okay, that's all I have for this video, guys. Get down in those comments and let me know what y'all felt about what Portia had to say about Black history, uh, as well as um, fibroids uh, issues she was having when she was pregnant. Did she? Do you think she she brought it home? Did y'all miss a point altogether, or just was y'all just damn confused like me? You know, I was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt, but like I said, she, oh, I, I don't know what to say anymore, guys. I don't know what to say, but that's all I have for this video. Make sure y'all like, share, and definitely subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined. All right, fam, I'll see y'all next video.